Good morning and welcome to our service of morning worship on this Pentecost Sunday. The Lord be with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And now we will sing our first hymn. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may God, our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. 
Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect for today, Pentecost Sunday. God, who as at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O oh, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to those bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle in you your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came to, 
together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, <coughs> visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own languages, in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. And Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young, mel your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood, before, coming, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we'll sing our second hymn. So, Heavenly Father, we pray now that as we come to reflect on your word, and especially this morning on the wonderful gift of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you will meet us afresh in the power of that same Spirit and give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your truth. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. A man was telling his friend proudly about a jigsaw puzzle he had recently completed. He said to him, I must be really good at these. I did this in about half an hour, and it said three to four years on the box. It's a great feeling, isn't it, when we complete something and have done it well. And today, we're celebrating the completion of the biggest project of all, God's salvation plan. Alleluia. It has been said that Christmas declares that God is with us. Easter declares that God is for us. And Pentecost declares, finally, that God can be in us. The liturgy for Easter speaks about paradise being restored because through Jesus we are given access to the tree of life from which Adam and Eve were banished because of their disobedience to God. But from Pentecost onwards, God's people are able to experience an even closer relationship with him than Adam and Eve had at the very beginning. Before the fall, Adam and Eve got on with the task of caring for the garden which God had created for them to live in. There was just the one command that God gave them which they disobeyed. But before they disobeyed it, I think they didn't have the same relationship with God that we do because we're told that after they'd eaten from the forbidden tree, they heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That implies that this was a familiar sound that they recognized from past encounters, which indicates that the kind of relationship they had with God before the fall was that they met him on the occasions when he chose to visit them in a personal and visible way and held conversations with him at those times. That was the relationship that Adam and Eve had in the garden with God, in paradise with God. He came in visible form and had conversations with them from time to time. That's not as good as the relationship we are now able to have with God. We can have a closer relationship with him than that. Yes, paradise has been restored, and in some of our liturgy it speaks about paradise being restored. But also paradise has become even better. We are now living in the age of God's final dispensation, the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Of course, we can talk to God at any time, and he's always listening, and he can and does speak to us through his word. But now he can also prompt and guide us by his Holy Spirit, who is constantly present with everyone who has invited Jesus into their lives. This is the same spirit that empowered Jesus in his earthly ministry. So that we can now live in a new and different way. Free from the encumbrance of condemnation hanging over our lives. Because Jesus has once and for all paid the price for our sin. Throughout the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was never never able to live within God's people. And that was because of the barrier that their sins created between themselves and God. Of course, we ourselves still sin. We still do things wrong. We still behave selfishly and fail to love our neighbours as ourselves. All that still happens. But now, Jesus has taken the punishment for our sin in our place. He has removed the barrier of condemnation that stood between us and our Heavenly Father. So that there is nothing to prevent 
the Holy Spirit from coming into our hearts and lives and staying there permanently, dwelling within us, making us his home, if that is what we will only ask him to do. Paul speaks of our bodies when we become a Christian. Becoming a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the age of intimacy and empowerment which God has been working towards for thousands of years and which represents his ultimate hope and plan and purpose for humankind. Pentecost is a celebration of divine renewal as we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. And that's symbolized by the rushing mighty wind which blows away all of their preconceptions and tongues of fire igniting flames of courage and conviction within their hearts and transforming them into bold witnesses of God's love and truth revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Our biblical journey this morning begins with the prophet Ezekiel finding himself in a valley of dry bones. A scene of desolation which in a sense mirrors the spiritual state of humankind. Lost and powerless to help themselves. Then we see God use Ezekiel to speak life into these dry bones. Just as God himself spoke creation into being at the very beginning of time. Ezekiel speaks the words of command, but the power, of course, is the power of God. God uses Ezekiel as a mouthpiece to prepare the way for the release of his power. In a similar way to the way that John the Baptist came to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus, who then released the power of God into the world. So God creates flesh on the bones and then breathes life into the flesh, creating a whole army of individual people from what was an utterly lifeless situation, bringing an impossible, unimaginable restoration to a lost cause and an incomprehensible hope to a place of utter desolation. All this is the work of the Holy Spirit, who is still today in the business of bringing restoration, renewal and hope to the wastelands of our hearts and lives. Alleluia. In our reading from Acts, we find the account of the fulfillment of Christ's promise as the Holy Spirit descends upon the disciples, empowering them to speak in different languages and emboldening them to proclaim the gospel with unwavering zeal. The fact that God gave the gift of being able to speak in different languages to them demonstrates his heartfelt desire that the gospel should now be heard by all. The time of his exclusive relationship only with the people of Israel is over. All are now welcome as the day of the Gentiles has finally dawned. There are hints of this in the gospel narrative, but now it becomes real as the old covenant is swept aside and the new covenant begins. Pentecost marks that moment when the covenant of the law is set aside and the covenant of the spirit is established. When sacrifices are no longer required because the final and complete sacrifice has been made. When mercy finally triumphs over judgment and new life is brought. When the church is born 
as eternal life is poured out freely into the lives of every single person who opens themselves to receive what Jesus Christ has done. Alleluia. And finally, our gospel reading offers us a further illustration of the significance of Pentecost for God's people. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit connects us directly to Jesus. Just as the branches which produce grapes are directly connected to the vine which feeds them with all the nourishment they need. The Holy Spirit brings us into an intimate union with Jesus and he invites us to abide in him just as the Holy Spirit abides in us. And that relationship is essential for bearing fruit and experiencing the fullness of life which Jesus came to make possible for each one of us. As we remain connected to Christ, his life flows into our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit and enables us to bear witness to his life, his light and his love in a world shrouded in death, darkness and despair. In this same reading, we find Jesus promising the coming of the Holy Spirit. The disciples wouldn't have been able to grasp what Jesus was saying at that time. But now, their eyes are opened as the spoken word becomes the living word. And that's another really important task of the Holy Spirit, to take what for us is now the written word in the pages of the Bible and transform it into the living word which empowers the reality of our lives. The Holy Spirit equips us with divine wisdom and insight and strength to fulfill the mission entrusted to us by Christ. Alleluia. Pentecost calls us to follow in the footsteps of the first disciples and join in the mission of proclaiming the gospel, living as vessels of God's love and grace in a broken world, but vessels within which the power of the Holy Spirit now dwells. As he releases us from fear and infuses us with courage and conviction to boldly proclaim the good news. The more we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, the more we will be able to tell others about the goodness of God. So as we celebrate Pentecost, let us remember that we are part of the great army into whom God has breathed his life, that we are empowered by his spirit to work with him and for his glory and may the fire of the holy spirit burn ever more brightly in our hearts empowering us to share the message of grace and salvation with those around us and may we heed christ's call to abide in him and draw strength from our intimate union with the vine let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your faithfulness and love in reaching out to us, working out your salvation plan and making it possible for you to share yourself with us. Breathe afresh upon us. Bring your word alive within us and use us in your service. Jesus, we praise you for coming to take away the barrier of condemnation that separates us from your presence and for opening the way for our broken lives to become vessels through which your grace and glory 
may be revealed to the world. Holy Spirit, we praise you that you bring the power of your indwelling presence to all who will receive you. Fill us afresh today so that we may increasingly experience the abundance of life in Jesus and that through us others may come to know him too. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand, of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll sing our third hymn.
Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Come Holy Spirit, come as a flame in your church. Turn us from dullness and tiredness of worship and fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Burn away conflicts that could divide and separate us. Be a flame in our hearts so that we can reach out in confidence to spread your gospel here in Leek, within our families, and further in the wider community. Bless our bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who teach us. Remind us of our baptism promises, our confirmation calling, the blessing of your Spirit. May we be like that fire on the first day of Pentecost, come as a flame. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come Holy Spirit as a wind and blow away the evils in this world, especially within governments and powers. Help national leaders to follow a path of peace rather than war, love rather than hatred, integrity rather than corruption. We ask you to bless the work of relief agencies in war-torn lands, who are giving support in places of famine and natural disasters, and those who are bringing into communities that need for outside support. Guide the leaders of our country. Sustain the people and bring us into a relationship of trust so that we can work together for the common good. Come as a wind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, as a flood tide and refresh the dry ground in our lives, those dry bones. Show us ways of changing differences in our communities caught up in disputes. Flood our children with the desire of learning. Water the seeds of growth that we can build up good communications with industries, the shops, and our lives. We pray for the places where the threat of unemployment affects the most needy. Turning people into homelessness, depression, or anger. Help those who build up our communities, towns, and industries. Come as a flood tide. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, as a comforter, bringing hope in times of difficulty. Bless those we know who are struggling with hunger, ill health, broken relationships, or loneliness. Bring wellness to those who are sick and bless those who care for them. Guide the surgeons and staff in our hospitals. Sustain our health system. Deliver fresh hope to those who are depressed. Comfort those who are caring for the dying. Come as a comforter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come Holy Spirit as life giver. When we are nearing the end of our life, give us confidence in faith and hold us in your love. Pour your blessing on those departed, those who are with you in your heavenly kingdom. And we ask that you be gracious to those who have died suddenly and died alone, those who have died too soon and those who died at their own hand. Support those who listen to the bereaved and counsel them. Come as a life giver. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Open the doors 
to our hearts as we pray this prayer in our hearts. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Break us, melt us, mold us, fill us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, for sake, the sake of, of your, your Son, Son, our, our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. And now we will sing our next hymn. The Spirit of God lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And may the blessing 
of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you, remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this service on Pentecost Sunday. Our service next week will be Trinity Sunday. We hope to see you again then. Thank you.